Hi, this is Roy Samuelson with the Audio Description Network Alliance. The ADNA presents. We're very honored to have Leah Pouliot with us. She's a screenwriter. She's relatively new to AD writing, but you're going to find out a lot about the intersection between AD writing and screenwriting. I can't wait to share this podcast episode. Uh, she has been featured in Legends of Tomorrow as a screenplay writer. It's so exciting to have you with us, Leah. Thank you. Did I get this right? You got it right. Perfect. Thanks. Oh, great. Aces. Aces all around, my dude. <laughs> oh, fun. I love to start by asking you what you love about audio description. I would like to say, like, I got into it because it is another avenue of writing in the industry. And what I've really learned by practicing it more and more is not just how similar it is to screenwriting, but it gives me an appreciation for directing on the page because it, it, really highlights actor emotions and how you have to say that in words. I think it's really easy to jump into uh, the idea of putting somebody had a catastrophic event happen and dismay is all over their face. Well, what does dismay mean? You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. what does it look like? Is, are their eyebrows heightened? Are it has their voice slightly changed? Are their nostrils flaring? And those are important things to highlight in a script, just as they are in audio description. So those are the things I really love. It's really great to hear about you phrasing audio description as a writer. I think about the uh, accessibility factor of AD and how it sometimes is conflated, like compared to closed captioning, which is really transcription. It's taking existing content and mm -hmm. just turning it into another thing. What you're doing is taking the visuals and writing them out. And I, I'm curious if you could expand a little bit about that aspect of the creative side of, of AD writing in your experience. What really like speaks to me and, and the differences and, and how AD writing fills in the gaps in the way that subtitles can't are the small moments on screen that take a show or a film from good to amazing. When you are seeing something between your two favorite characters on screen and you have silence, your subtitles aren't going to tell you that. Your your captions aren't are just going to say silence. And as much as like deafening silence speaks to a person describing how somebody's eyes look or how their face scrunches up when they eat something sour or when their skin turns red with anger, there is something just so much more visually satisfying that needs to be spoken and put into words, which only audio description does that, that, that can't be replaced. Wow. Very nicely said. That's so great. Uh, when you're talking about the silence uh, one of the things I've noticed in in your work as a AD writer is that you give that that space, that respect when it's deserved, that you found a real balance between uh, capturing as much as you can and also respecting the audience's immersive experience of of feeling that that emotion of of that silence. Is that a decision that you make on a case by case basis, I assume? Yeah, it's definitely a case by case. and it's really interesting to see even between lower budget broadcast drama to a higher budget prestige drama. I noticed that there's a lot more silence in prestige drama because they're planting a lot more things. They have a lot more silence because you can sit in it a bit more. Broadcast has commercials that's the intention of act breaks they've got to get that advertisement in and a lot of times you end an act with a, a cliffhanger like scene and then you begin the next act with a recap um and that's sort of like what we were taught in cw like let's make sure we bring the audience back up to speed in case they like switch the channel or whatnot so when you again look at those prestige dramas without the commercial breaks they were sort of like the the stepping stone to what streaming is and you have that silence to play more in and the smaller minute uh moments to watch more i like to at least give the audience a sense that like okay they've planted this one object they've planted what we call a macguffin 
you have that silence. You can, your mind is filling in the gaps, right? And you want your audience to have their imagination take over. And with just words and all of it, during all the entire silence, if it's not necessarily, don't put it in. And I must admit, like, when I was starting out with AD, I did do more than less. And I'm still learning. I think everybody is still learning, right? It's why shows will get, like, better with age or, or like, TV has turned into the golden era because we're just getting better and better at storytelling and, and knowing how to speak per what streamers or channels or what we're watching and I, I appreciate silence the longer I do it because I'm like no this is important that's the it probably said beat on the page so that we could sit in it for a minute I can hear the influence that your screenplay writing has had on AD writing do you think the opposite is true yes I I still work on a lot of my own stuff although I'm in between staffing positions a writer life is filled with a lot of free work. I, I think that's just like the creative endeavor we all take. It is the opposite from working to live to living to work. When you're a creative, you are definitely living to work uh, and you wanted to find happiness in your career and your life. Uh, and because of that, so I'm always working on my own stuff. I'm not trying to have an actor read it and mimic exactly what I'm saying but I know a better way of displaying it now on the page than just using a few adjectives what an yeah. e- I, that's I, we haven't uh interviewed someone in, of your of your skill set before this so this is really great to hear the your experience with this um yeah are there differences that are pretty surprising between uh between the two different types of writing Anything that that strikes you as uh, maybe something that our audience would would appreciate knowing? I think the audience will find fascinating, though it's a little different from AD writing specifically. I've learned more to see how a scene starts and a scene ends. And some of the shows I'm like, oh, a lot of times this ends with people walking away. It starts with a confrontation. Somebody wins the confrontation. The other person walks away. And it's given me a little more insight on directing and how how people move through a scene and just being able to describe that in audio description. I'm like, oh, now I'm really paying attention to the ins and outs and the pacing of a scene. You you want them in fast. You want to get right to the dialogue and and how it's going to play out. Who's going to win that scene? If there's confrontation, is there is there an epiphany? then you notice the out of it and it is like very different per who your director is but I just didn't take those special moments uh I didn't notice them as much until I was writing them down for audiences in audio description I I'm so focused on comparing the two and and seeing the similarities and differences you've answered a great question that I was going to ask about with the uh uh, how would you teach uh, a new screenplay writer based on your experience in both roles? I think you've answered that really beautifully with what you just shared. So uh, that's it, it's really neat to hear your take on this. In a hypothetical world, if you were to have all the time in the world and you can teach a audio description writer a skill that um, that you found would benefit uh from your experience uh, is there anything I, I don't want any trade secrets those are yours so yes. hang on to those but what is something that you'd love to share well i i guess i gotta i gotta give a shout out to the person who helped me get the job his name is shane hello shane he's the one who's really helped direct me on knowing what to do and what not to do so this is sort of coming from what i've learned from him because he's done this for years now. And it's it's just, if you have a word that represents an emotion, how can you describe it instead of using that word? It's, it's a lot more, like it takes a lot more words to describe a facial reaction, but you are studying what a face is as, as much as you want to say angry. Let's go with angry. You don't want to use that word because that's that's not fair in audio description. It, it's just like everybody has a different sense of what angry looks like on the face. Describe what your actor looks like in their sense of angry. And so it, it takes a sentence or two. 
And you should be thinking about that when you're screenwriting. I'm so sorry. My dog is, is going a little crazy. Uh, you should be thinking about that in screenwriting because one thing I see a lot of new writers do is saying that an actor has an epiphany. They smile knowing everything is going to be okay. That last sentence, knowing everything is going to be okay. How do I see that on the screen? And, and how do I describe that on the screen? And you're just saying that you want to get maybe an Oscar worthy, worthy actor to hopefully ride that whole storyline home. Those are, those are the things I'm learning more to pinpoint, especially for, for newer writers. So I'm just like, we got to change this because this isn't going to work here or on screen. This is a visual medium. I can hear the care and the craft that you and Shane are bringing to this work, the thoughtfulness, the consideration. Yeah. If there's a, uh, a challenge in general that you could share, uh, not looking for specifics, but I guess what I'm fishing for is, well, let's say that you were given a, a, let's say a TV show or a movie, and maybe there was a challenge there that you're really proud of how you overcame it. Can you think of anything off the top of your head that you could share with us? Uh, caffeine. Is that my joke? Like it's a, it, it, the truth. It, <laughs> so it's yeah. like humor is funny yeah, because yeah. it's true. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of things changed in the pandemic. This is a long winded answer, but because of that, a lot of us moved home. Right. And I think finding somebody's rhythm and their schedule is so important to this job. I find myself writing in the mornings now, and I was such a night writer before, but I can look at a screen at night so much easier. Is it good for my circadian rhythm? No, but I I can sit down and watch a show and it's almost a little more decompressing to do that then than to have to like work my mind to write a script at night. So I've switched my schedule around and I'm finding the best way where I can be most efficient with my life, with AD work, with my own projects. And I think that would be the piece of advice I would give new AD writers is just like, if you're working at home, find your rhythm. Was that the question? It's great. It's okay. so great. I'm thinking about my experience. The uh, same thing with recording from home. It, uh, when I do record from home, it makes a difference. And I've found that afternoon time is my sweet spot. The morning, yeah. I just, I can do it. Evenings, I can do it. But if I have a choice, oh, wow. And it's it's funny that you bring that up. I'd never thought about process in, in that, you know, obviously different aspects I'm voicing in your writing, but there's something about really paying attention to what you're, you know, I guess it's your body's telling you, right? Yeah. Because I was fighting myself in the beginning being like, no, night is my time to write. That is what I've always done. Like, that's what I got to continue to do. And then a couple of weeks ago, you're just like, no, let me, let me try to shake it up. Let me flip them. Let me see if this works better. And it does. I'm like, I don't know why I was fighting myself off the schedule that worked before when it's it's now changing. There's nothing wrong with just flipping the script, as they say. Nice. No, that's great. Anything else you'd like to share with our audience? I think if you are interested in in both AD and screenwriting, it's a it's a good thing to be watching different shows with different programming companies. And, and getting a feel for how they describe it. Because I I don't know all the other companies that, that work with it, but we have some clients, while I'm sure other big streamers have different clients. And everybody has a similar book, but not the same book. So I find it really interesting if I'm watching like a sci-fi fantasy show and I'm seeing what they're concentrating on describing and everything that is important to say on screen while our method is just making sure that the important story beats come out and we're not having to fill the entire silence with words and taking that to screenwriting. It, it's very important to look at efficiency the same way. It's never, can I put and fill this script with everything I need to? It's, it's looking at what are the important beats? What needs to be said to tell the story? And to give a really engaging watch and experience or audio experience. And so what will need to be included in that? And everything else is confetti, which is one of my favorite sayings that Mike Flanagan uses in a lot of his story pieces. But it sometimes it can be too much. You have to find the nice line. 
and by watching different programming, seeing how other people do it, finding what tells the story the best way, it's going to help you in both worlds. I'm leading up to, uh, can I do one more follow-up question? Oh, yeah, of course. If I think about integrating AD earlier in the production process, I I see advantages and disadvantages. I'm a part of a, a project right now that is integrating AD prior to shooting. And it's a fascinating approach. Obviously, the way things are historically and, you know, systemically done, it's usually, I'm assuming you get full production after it's already been shot, and then you write AD, and then you send it back. Is there an opportunity that you see, let's say five, 10 years down the road, we jump fast forward in the future. Do you see the advantages or challenges of, uh, of that kind of integration? I see both. I I think in a perfect production schedule that is a well-oiled machine, uh, maybe doing some AD before the the production during the screenwriting process, that would be a dream. I think you would also get the writer's intention if if they see something on the page and they're like, I want to make sure this comes across for all of my viewers. They're going to be the ones that that should be writing it or highlighting it or bolding it in a script. However, I knowing that production is a messy process and a lot of times you have that golden saying, fix it in post, which is not a great motto to live by because I, I started in post and I, I have a lot of friends in post. So I know how how much heavy lifting they have to do if if a story isn't coming through they're the ones who have to make the story uh and thinking about like if ad was done before all of that would it have just gone to waste because the whole thing had to change later because production it didn't end up happening the way that they had envisioned it to happen so those are those are some some of the pros and cons to say like in a perfect world with a perfect production well-oiled machine again would be fantastic but how reality has played out it it can get like oh no (laughs) yes i hear it oh thanks so much for sharing how can people follow you social media websites that sort of thing yeah uh i'm on twitter i am at leah underscore lame um that is a a name i came up in middle school and somehow stuck around (laughs) with it if that ages me and I have a website. It's it's leahpoliot.com, though it's really just a writer's resume kind of website. So you're not going to find much, much craziness on there. But yeah, those are my my two quick plugs. Thanks so much for joining us, Leah. It's great to have you. Thank you. 